Hi guys, Jess here from the Scrappy Sisters. So I'm going to be doing a layout using all of the cards that I was given when I um, gave birth to my son. So I've used my diamond press to cut them all into circles as you can see and now I'm just simply cutting the circles in half. And I wanted the circles to be as exact as possible so I'm measuring the half with the original half so they're all at least approximately the same. So I just get busy doing all of that and I cut every single circle I cut out of that middle size um, into half. And then I'm going to do a bit of a scalloped design. So I'm just putting a little bit of um, double sided tape onto the back of the circles. I don't need a huge amount because I am going to do some stitching on the sewing machine with this as well. So I put them down so the bottom of the circle, the middle bottom of the circle is touching right at the bottom of the page and I've got a tiny 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 little bit hanging over the edge. No real rhyme or reason to that. I didn't want it to start exactly square on the page. Could have hung it over a lot, could have hung it over a little. I just, whatever I felt like at the time. So I stuck all those down in a row and then I started doing the second row and changed my mind. Um, so I took them off and then I went over to the sewing machine and sewed a line. So after every single row, I went over to the sewing machine and I sewed a line. So that's where I disappeared to. So I could fit about nine of my half circles. So I got very busy doing that and I come back to you shortly, there we go. So I've filled up nearly all of my page. Um, so nine circles across or half circles across and a line of sewing after every single row. Um, and it was really just luck, but I managed to make it when I got to the top that they almost fit like exactly perfect. There was a millimeter or something of white paper showing at the top so I was super thrilled with that and if I had measured or actually um, made sure I spaced them exactly even I probably could have made it perfect but I was really really happy with how that worked out. 99% um, of the time as well I didn't start with the very end circle that the one that hangs over the edge because I was worried that I might not get um, it spaced in exactly the same place as the other ones so most of the time I started with um, the second or third circle in and then worked um, either way down the sides just because I did want them to to be basically the same position in each row so I hadn't used the sewing machine on a lot of layouts, but I've just recently started. Now that I have, I'm really enjoying it. So I'm just tying, uh, pulling the threads through and tying knots. I don't know if that's necessary, but as I'm a sewer, I just think that that's what I need to do. So I tie off all the knots, and then I also cover the knots with just normal sticky tape just to make sure the little daggy bits don't stick out the side and also just to make sure they don't come un undone. I don't want it tearing through the paper or anything like that. So tie all those off, sticky tape them down, trim the leftover card that's sticking out the side and my, I was going to say blank canvas is ready to go but of course it's a very, very, very busy canvas um, full of all the cards. In hindsight, something that might have looked really, really pretty as well might have been to actually cut some of the handwriting part, you know, the, the actual message that the people wrote to me. I didn't think to do that. I only cut out the actual decoration part on the front and then I threw them away. So, um, yeah, if you're going to try this at home, that might be a nice idea as well. So I had two other cards that I haven't used because they had real photographs on the front as opposed to all the other cards mostly seem to be cartoons so I decided I didn't want to waste those either so I'm actually going to back my photo with this little one of the hands and feet you don't know that that's what it is but because the hands and feet were quite light colored um, as you can see the right hand side of my photograph near the little one's nose is quite dark so placing the photo so it's near the light hands and feet of the card worked quite well to sort of lighten up around my little one's face to see that just a little bit better. So I backed that and was planning on only backing it once um, just on this cardstock 
and um, but as I cut it out and then I threw the card away into my little bucket there that you can see in the top um, corner of the camera so just trimming that down to try and make it a bit even I don't use a Fiskars or a anything trimmer um, because I do have one but it doesn't cut straight so yeah as I was throwing it away I noticed that there was a closer up version on the back and that was again quite light colored and I really wanted to try and um, lighten up that photo just a little bit so I trimmed the first layer down just a tiny bit more so that I could fit a second layer under using the lighter color um, you'll notice that my camera stops and starts a lot or you hopefully you won't notice but that's because my little one doesn't give me hours and hours to scrapbook as a lot of us don't have so I kind of come and go come and go throughout the day where I can steal a little bit of time and the camera that I'm using is a real pain in the backside it only will record for 10 minutes at a time anyway so that works well in between wake-ups and feedings and playtimes and all of that with my little one but it also works um, works well that I don't do too much all in one go so I bought a whole collection of the little you boy pack I've got the chipboard I've got the stickers I've got the ephemera pack there and I decided for this layout that I was only going to use that collection so I just went through and um, picked the things I liked I've had another card that I hadn't used yet the baby boy card but I'm going to do another layout and I'm going to use that title baby boy on that layout and you can't see them but there were also three little brads that were in a, a homemade card that someone gave us that are my little one's initials so I'm actually going to use the hello my name is ephemera that I've put off to the side the baby boy and the initials on the second layout I do using all those other circles you can see um later on so stay tuned for that so I'm just having a play with the ephemera here it's a little bit easier because I knew I was only using this collection and now it's just a matter of sorting it all out and figuring out what I want to do and where I want to do it I kind of lay it out without sticking it down first just to have a bit of a play see what I like see what's missing it's quite a busy background so it was a bit challenging to get everything down without um it getting lost in the background I know in this image you can't really see the boy section very well so what I'm doing there is I've got my Chamel date stamp and I'm stamping all of my little ones details like his date his um, date of birth his weight um, time of birth length and all of that jazz so I just cut that out because um, I didn't think you needed to see all of that and now it's time to stick it all down so photo goes on chipboard baby goes on haven't really used much chipboard before but I quite quite like it just spacing out the BOY before I actually push it down just to make sure it's basically in the center I don't really measure but want to get a bit close I go really light on the um, double-sided tape I don't use a huge amount of double-sided tape I figure a little bit is enough to get it to sort of stick on and then it goes into the pockets anyway it's not something that's played with so I don't use tons and tons of it um, I haven't had any problems yet with anything falling off so touch wood um, I don't and touch wood it all just sticks on over time um, who knows I guess I'll just have to wait and see so yeah just pinning everything down there I only put stuff around the photo on this layout I figure the backgrounds busy enough I don't need to have any clusters anywhere else uh, I was just about done and then decided I wanted a few enamel dots so I went and got my enamel dot stash as you can see there I've got those divider packs from IKEA they're only $7.95 or something I know you can't really see them but they're pretty cool I've got three of them and they fit in the 12 by 12 storage cubes from IKEA as well which is brilliant so just popping on some blue enamel dots and then I also put on some pearl enamel dots and I've got a few close-ups for you to have a look at as well so you can see the end product so I'm just about done so I hope you really enjoyed watching this layout gave you a little bit of an idea of how you could use up maybe some birthday cards or Mother's Day cards or something like that you don't need to go as crazy as I did and use all your cards 
even just um, a couple of circles or a couple of squares or hexagons or something might be a really nice punch um, to do a layout and keep that special moment, keep that special memory. So here's my close-ups there. Um, I was really, really happy with how this turned out. It was busy, um, a lot busier than what I'd ever done before, but I really enjoyed it and I loved using the sewing machine again. So I've got some close-up photos. Stay tuned for more and we'd love to have you subscribe and like. Thank you.